What is Pagora and why should you care? Well, if you're a spinner, Pagora fiber is a great fiber to spin with because it has a natural sheen to it that takes on dyes beautifully and it spins up really well. Hey, welcome back to the studio, Sugar Snaps. I'm Brittany. If we haven't met before, welcome to my studio. Textile Indie is a place for fiber artists, spinners, basket weavers, natural dyers, and other fiber artists to explore new realms of creativity and get inspired to new, new projects. Today, I have a white and a brown representation of Pagora fiber. This is fiber from my cousin-in-law, Janae's goats, and she sent it to me to wash it up and see how it comes out and to share the process. So I'm going to share it along with you and Janae, thanks for watching. If you're washing small batches of Pagora fiber or other goat fibers, then you can do these in wash bins like this. If you're using larger amounts of fiber, then get a wash tub, a Rubbermaid tub, or something like that. You'll want a ratio of three parts water to one part of fiber so that there's enough room for the water to move around the fiber. Pagora goat fiber doesn't have lanolin in it like a wool fiber does. Lanolin is the grease that coats a sheep fiber and it makes the wool greasy. So when you wash wool, one of the reasons you use a wool detergent like power scour, which I'll be using today, is to remove some of the lanolin so that it's not sticky and greasy to the touch. We don't have that problem with Pagora because it doesn't have that natural lanolin. However, there is the goat smell. So we're going to try to wash that out in the process. With larger batches, you would dump this in water, open up the fibers and do multiple batches of washing to remove all of the dirt and grease and whatever else is in the fiber, just opening it up. If you're doing smaller batches, you can go in and find the tips of the fiber and lay the fibers out so that they're all going in the same direction. This is a lot more tedious and if you're trying to work quickly, can be annoying because you have to go through and literally pull them out and lay them in the same direction like this. And then they end up getting mixed up later anyway. In order to speed up the process, we're going to use hot water power scour, which is a wool friendly cleaning detergent. It doesn't strip the fibers of the things it needs to last a long time, but it does clean the smell and any dirt and grease that the fibers don't need. Before I will start washing the fiber though, I want to shake out some of the dirt. So I just kind of get ahead of the process because a lot of the dirt will come out in the water, but there might be big particles that we can get out ahead of time. So I'm going to open the fibers up and just kind of shake them over my bin. You can see some particles are coming out and any large pieces of vegetable matter, this stuff that's from the fields in the fiber, I'll pull out. It's easier to get it out when the fiber is dry than when it gets wet. So I'm just going through and doing a handful at a time, picking up the big stuff, going through any mats, pulling out matted sections like this guy. I'll do this for both bits of fiber and then we'll move to the washing bins. It is a good idea to wear a dust mask when you're doing this because you don't want to be breathing in the dirt that comes up, the dust that comes out of the fibers. Here there's some grass particles I'm going to pull out. Look at all that dirt. Dump the dirt out of your water bins and then place your fiber back into the bin. And now we're ready to move to washing these bits of fiber. First off, I'm going to take this bin of fiber and separate it between three bins. I have these two bins here that I'm going to separate the fiber into, but first off, I need to fill them with water. So this bin will get separated into three parts. I'm going to fill these bins with warm water. Now with these two bins filled with water, I'm going to take my power scour and put about an eighth of a teaspoon into each bin. Push it around to get it all out of the spoon. And 
then I'll take a third of the fiber and place it into this bin, press it into the water. And then another third into the other bin. Actually, I have enough room I can place all of this fiber into these two bins. So now go in and open up the fiber so that any segments of the fiber that are kind of matted or stuck together, you're opening that up so that the heat and the soap can access all the fibers and any vegetable matter can start to fall out. And we'll soak the fiber in this water with the soap for 10 to 15 minutes. So you can count the time that you're opening up the fibers and doing this. It might even take you that long. You can see the water is pretty dirty here. So this means that this process is working. This one's pretty opened up. Now we'll be doing this probably at least twice, maybe three times, depending on how dirty the water comes out the second time. So we'll have another chance to open up the fibers if we skipped any or missed any. So I'll set this aside and do the second bin. Oh, this fiber is gonna be so fun to spin. I'm going to allow the fiber to soak for another 10 minutes to remove any greases or dirt and then dump this water out and do this again. Okay, so while the white rests in the water, I have a gray fiber. Janae would have to be the one to tell us exactly what this color is called, because I don't know the Pagora goat color categories. Another two bins, I'll add some power scour. Nice thing about power scour is that it's very potent, so you only need a little bit. Wool comes from sheep, hair comes from goats and other animals. So that's just the categorization difference. I'll press this in to the water and open up the fibers. And I have company. Sasha wants to see what I'm doing. Ooh. So the brown fiber came from a goat named Buddy and the white fiber came from a goat named Ed, Mr. Ed. Looks like Buddy had a lot of fun in the dirt pits because this is a lot dirtier than the white stuff. <laughs> Buddy's living his best life, rolling in the dirt. Agora goat does have guard hairs, but they're really fine and not very coarse, so you can spin them in your yarn. If you do want to take them out, they may fall out in the combing process, so it might be a natural result of processing that you remove those fibers. If you don't like having your hands in the warm water for long periods of time as you're opening the fibers, you can use rubber gloves. However, I like to be able to feel the fibers as I'm working so I can feel for lumps and bumps and untangle things. And that's easier to do without wearing gloves. Also, it's cold out today, so it's kind of nice to play in the hot water. Cleaning fiber is usually a great thing to do in the summer because you can set up outside and keep things tidier inside but it's also nice to do when it's cold and kind of wintry out because you're processing fibers in warm water. So it's nice to play in that. Sections like this that have lots of grass bits in it may be worth pulling out and removing entirely from your batch of goat hair because it's going to be challenging to get all of those little grass bits out. So if you come across that kind of thing as you're going through the fiber, 
maybe pick it out or try to open it up so the water has a chance to pull away those bits. Now let's circle back to the white fiber. Now I'm gonna move Buddy aside and go back to Mr. Ed. Work through the fiber again, opening things up. And then you'll pull the fiber aside and gently lift it out. You don't wanna add a ton of friction just so that this fiber doesn't get matted. So I'm gonna squeeze out this bundle and whew, very dirty. Dump this out on my sink. And then refill the bin with water and stick it, stick the fiber back in. You only wanna use a little bit of power scour or whatever detergent you're using because you don't want the fiber to be bubbly or sudsy. That will cause you to need to do a lot more uh, rinses that are unnecessary, so it's a waste of water and time. Doing an eighth of a teaspoon in this amount of water is plenty to clean the fibers, especially if you're doing two or three batches. More soap does not necessarily equal less batches of cleaning. You can get an idea of how many washings you need to do by the second one by pulling the fiber aside after you've opened it up again and seeing how dirty the water is. This water is still pretty murky, so I'm most likely going to do at least a third, if not a fourth, washing to remove all of this soap and as much dirt and grease as possible. Okay, I'll let these sit Come back in about 10 minutes, dump them out, reapply water, let them sit for another 15, 10 to 15 minutes, and then we'll see how dark that water is, whether we need to do a fourth rinsing or not. I'm removing the fiber for the third time and do one more to rinse it out and make sure that I got all the dirt and grossness out. The water can also be poured on your gardens. Okay, I'm placing this batch in some water again. This I did not add soap to. The last rinse you don't want to add soap because you want to remove the excess soap. If any detergent remains on the fiber, it makes it sticky and kind of gummy. But we used so little power scour through the process that this last rinse should rinse it all out. And there's still vegetable matter in the fiber, which we can remove as we comb it once it's dry. But the water is running fairly clear. So again, I'll set this aside to soak some more. Do this other batch. I jumped ahead in the process, so I want to go over what I did to finish washing the wool. So after I did that final rinse, I went through the wool to make sure that there weren't any suds or bubbles in it. So you can usually tell by pulling some of the fiber apart and it's little bubbles form or shiny spots. That's a good indication that not all of the detergent has been washed out. So if that is the case, after that last rinse, do yet another rinse to remove all of the soap suds. And as you're working with it, be really gentle. I was a little bit rough with the fiber as I was washing it, and it got a little bit more matted than I would like it. So be really gentle as you're opening it up and working with it, and just lift it out. Don't totally squeeze it because that does start to felt the fiber. Once I did that, I blotted it on a towel. So took a towel, put the wool on top of it, folded the towel over and sque squeezed out more of the water. Goat fiber can hold a lot of water. So you want to get as much out as possible before you start the drying process or it will take forever. <laughs> Then lay your fiber, your wet fiber, out on a window screen. I have this repurposed window screen that I can set somewhere and it allows airflow under the fiber as well as on top of the fiber. So it increases the speed of the drying process. You'll lay your fiber on top of this screen, trying to kind of spread it out so that the fiber has room to breathe and to start to dry. You can see these beautiful lustrous locks here. It cleaned up really nicely, especially this white stuff has a really nice luster to it now. So then set it on something to dry somewhere that is has good airflow and a regular temperature. 
And then once it's dry, you can store it in a paper bag or in a cloth bag or somewhere that still has breathability. Don't store it in a plastic bag because that will start to cause the fiber to sweat and it can cause felting in heat changes and moisture changes. Even if the fiber feels dry, it may still have some moisture in it. And if the temperature fluctuates, it can become, it, it will draw moisture um, to itself. So keeping it somewhere, again, with airflow, lots of airflow. We're trying to avoid felting and deterioration of the fiber. So I put these both on the screen and these dried for about a week. It took about a full week to get them to totally dry, even though I squeezed out a lot of the water initially. Once they dry, then you can, again, store them somewhere or process them. And I'm going to be processing some of this with wool combs, which are these dangerous looking guys. I will comb them into combed locks. And I'll also do some with these carters. Carters are sheets of material with lots of spines on them that brush the fiber in different directions. So I'll go over the differences and processing this fiber in another video. So you can check that out when that comes out. I'll have it linked up here as soon as it's available. Thanks so much for watching how to process Pagora goat fiber. This applies to lots of goat hairs and wool fibers. So go ahead and follow the same process for those as well. And for now, thanks for watching and being part of the Textile Indie YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love you to do that. You can click the link below. Like this video if you found it helpful. It helps this video and my channel spread to other fiber enthusiasts. And until next time, happy making. See you later.